Okay. Great. No, but I, I want to have mine on too. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, Nick. It looks like this is your first time in a lift vehicle. All right. So now you can adjust your seat and menu here. All right. Cool. That's more like it. All right. That's comfortable. Yeah. You wanna? That's better. Okay. And we can also adjust the steering wheel if you want to. Okay. That's cool. Oops. Oops. Yeah, so we're going to just go into the cockpit again, and I'm just going to save your profile. Sweet. So it's saved to this or any other leave vehicle mm -hmm. we have. So as I said before, um, we have a lot of sensors in the car, because we want to build trust between the vehicle and the passengers, and to do that, the vehicle needs to know what's going on in the car. The first thing we're going to show is our C4 steering wheel. So here we have a display of the steering wheel, and you can see when you put your hands on it, we can detect where your fingers are or your hands. So we can see if you're paying attention, driving both hands, focused, or you're just relaxed. Yeah. And this is going to be used for handover to automatic drive. Sure. So we're going to have some automatic stretches, and it's going to be obvious when we're going to do automatic, and also I will guide you. And when the car asks to take over, you can just let go of the steering wheel, mm -hmm. and it will take over. And when you want to take back control, put both hands on the steering wheel, and it will know you want to drive. Okay, two hands to regain control. Yeah, exactly. So we require two hands because we don't want to accidentally have the car let you start driving when you're not prepared. If you're just reaching for a cup holder and bracing the steering wheel, we don't want to just let go of control. Yep. So that's Makes also sense. part of the trust. The vehicle needs to trust that you're prepared to take over. Mm -hmm. um, another sensor we're going to show you today is our drive monitoring system. Mm -hmm. So that's the IR camera that we have here that's yep. tracking where you're looking. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're using that to see where you're looking in the car, if you're looking at the mirrors or screens. And in that way, Liv can adapt the message she gets to you about the information around. If you're looking at the screen, she might warn you about something. But if you're looking forward, she don't warn you. How, so ma how many zones is the are there for that? So we're going to okay. show you the zones we have now. So you can just try looking around the car. Windshield. Left mirror. Rear view mirror. Center display. Right mirror. Center display we windshield. Cluster Center also, so. display cluster. Cool. Center so, display. So with this, we try to feed relevant information to the people in the car. Mm -hmm. Because if the systems get annoying, they nag you about things you already know. People turn them off, mm -hmm. and then you get no added safety benefit from the system, which is bad. Because we want our systems to be, to be used because we know from experience that they will increase the safety of the passengers in the car and also outside. Yep. So we need to have an adaptable a system that can adapt to the passengers and whoever you are and people like their levels at different yeah you know, the settings at different levels yeah. so it's good if the system can do that automatically by itself um, the last sensor we're going to show you is actually our seat belts so these four gauges show how far the seat belts are pulled out nice. so you can see when I pull mine it moves up. so by this we can see the position of the, of the passenger in the car so we can see that you're leaning forward right. because your one is pulled out far. Gotcha. So if we're about to have an accident, she knows who who she needs to pull back into a more safe position, for instance. Or we could just do this and give information to you in that way. Yep. So you can try also to think around with this. Maybe guys in the back. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh no way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, I mean, you can give information in a lot of different ways. You can have voice commands, you can have things on the screen or the cluster, but you can also do haptic warning on the steering wheel or, yep. or seat belts. So, there's a lot of different way, ways to, to give information. And we're trying to explore these and see which is better for which kind of scenario and so on. We also have microphones in the seat belts so we can see who is talking in the car. That's cool. So, the car can know. So, there's three in each seat belt like this. Yeah. So that way the car can know if they are having a conversation and you're concentrated on driving or if you are having a conversation with me and maybe you need more information about the outside world because you're concentrated on something else than driving. Right. That's and cool. also it uh, stops the guys in the back from messing with you, giving commands to the car because it knows they are doing things for right. you as a driver. Right. So you can limit certain things to certain persons. That's cool. So now we're ready to have a drive. Sadly our night vision tunnel doesn't doesn't handle the rain. <laughs> yeah, it's sort I of stuck and taking it down and, and just like gets hundreds of liters of water on it. Yeah, and it will fall down. So we'll just have to simulate that part. We're gonna okay. do two laps on the track. Okay. Um, normal traffic rules apply. Yep. Try to keep to 15, 20 miles per hour. Yep. It's mostly a manual driven car, but there will be some automatic stretches. But we'll get to that when we get there. Okay. So you can just put it in drive, and we can. So this. Oh, this is out. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're not the first one asking yeah. to change the gear yeah. in this car. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah. So we can just go forward and mm -hmm. follow the, the road ahead of us. This is actually a good position for that because I often put my hand in the center of the steering yeah. wheel. Yeah, so we've done some, in our previous Road version we had uh, four placements for that to oh. see which is good. So here we have uh, some V2X communication from other vehicles that tells us this part of the road is slippery. So she warns us a little bit. And depending on how you drive, she will do different things. Gotcha. So either she will break you down or she will release the seatbelts when you go down to safe speed. Right, instance. okay. So now we're getting to a traffic sign. So we could just stop here even though it's uh, green. You can see on your display that green light. Uh, green light, yeah. So okay. you don't only have uh, communication with other vehicles on the road. You can also have communication with infrastructure, infrastructure. like the traffic lights. And you see it's, it's yellow, yeah, and then it's going to go to red. Then we see how long okay. it's going to be red. So this gives the car an extra information about what's going on, not just by having sensors, but also by actual, having actual communication with other people in traffic or infrastructure. In traffic. Is, is this infrastructure component, is that a standard or is it sort of auto live flavored or is there some kind of like alliance in the industry? I mean, I, I don't know anything about I mean, it. And you could have it with a standard VTX protocols. Mm -hmm. so right now we're doing it with a cloud service because we only need this one traffic light to showcase the type of communications because that's what we're trying to focus on here. Mm -hmm. When everything gets automated, we need to know how people will react to different systems, mm -hmm. how to build that it trust, will be green soon. and how to have intuitive information feed between the systems and, mm -hmm. the, and the passengers. So that's what we're trying to explore with this. Okay. What kind of information do we need, and what sensors do we need to put in the car to get that information available? Gotcha. And how do people react to different bits of information? Yep. So now I would just suggest we just take the outer circle okay. and see what happens. Accident ahead, drive carefully. Right, so we have some car with a problem here. So she just tugs our belt a little bit so we pay attention forward because yep. we don't know where the cars are on they're on the road in their own way or something like that. Sure, yeah. So we can just pull up to the stop sign and make a stop there. Yeah. Stop at the stop sign. <laughs> Before the stop sign? Yeah, no, Paul told me I'd get a better experience if I drove badly. All oh, right. <laughs> no, I know. That is your <laughs> normal driving. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go right here. Yeah. And when we do that, it's going to ask you to go to autonomous drive. Okay. And when it does that, it will light up blue and you just release control to it. Okay. So just take right and stay in the right lane. Autonomous drive active. Now you can just let go. Hands off and, and feet Hi again. Off. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to take off. your yep. attention away from the road. So now we can watch I'm the really video message you've decided while leave drives for us. Experience the hmm. future of driving. All right. So now when the video message is finished, we can just take over control again with both hands. Autonomous and we can go into the left activated. lane. Okay. Autonomous drive available. So we're going to do the same lap again. Same the, yeah. Yeah. So we can just do a small pause here. Yeah. So I'm just going to tell you what would happen in there instead. Gotcha. Yep. So normally we'd try to experience how you can adapt different sensors and information in right hand. So in the first part we would have a pedestrian walking in front of you and we would have a spotlight pointing them out. So that's also one way to get information to the, to the driver. You don't need to have a voice command or a screen. You can just point the light to something and you will know, oh, that's something that's more important to, to notice. Yep. Uh, but sometimes spotlights doesn't work good. So in the second part of the the tunnel we would have a foggy situation mm -hmm. and then a spotlight would blind you yep. so she wouldn't turn that on but instead she would turn on the uh, the night vision display with our heat camera and you could see okay. the deer that was, we actually pulled into the tent now yep. we started so that would be heated in the in the tunnel we would see that instead right through, through, through the, the fog, fog. Yeah. yeah that's cool yeah so we could just go forward here and yep. we're gonna not do all the sleeper part again but we're gonna go behind the white Volvo uh, like like we just, just came take out. Take right? Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, yep. so we're just going to skip over the blue part. Yeah. yeah. Why the least shit about the Titan? What? Uh, because we were on a slippery patch and he was driving very fast on the slippery patch. <laughs> <laughs> so now we set all the settings very low speed because it's a closing track and so on. So we see he's got some kind of problems. We should turn onto the right lane and go around him. Yeah, so you could see we had a motorbike behind us when you check the mirror. Oh yeah? Yeah, because I saw you were checking this mirror. And leave this because you were checking this mirror. Alright, otherwise she would have reminded you that there was a motorbike behind us if you didn't check the mirror. 
Right. So yeah. that is also one way to try to feed your relevant information by knowing the context and the car and what you're doing and so on. That's cool. Right, so now we can continue. That's right, yeah. Yep. And we're gonna go left and park behind the blue car that we have. Okay, yes. So the middle part of this is gonna be actually a demo of our LiDAR. Oh, cool. Which is the only sensor that we're not using in this car here. Right. And that's gonna be with Steve, so he's gonna get back from that in a minute. Nice to meet you guys. So for this one, I'll be driving. Yep. So if we can have one person up front, two in the rear of the vehicle, and we can get started. Sure. Thank you. Umbrella's already broken. I've opened it and closed it so many times today. I can ask you guys to please all buckle up before we get started. High speed activities. <laughs> So welcome to AutoLeave's LiDAR algorithm demonstration. LiDAR is a technology that AutoLeave is excited to enter and one that up until now has been pretty much in every single autonomous level three through five prototype vehicle. Hmm. What we're showing on the screen here is we basically have a camera mounted on top of our LiDAR. The camera is in no way doing any, any sensing. It's just for documentation purposes so we can actually visualize what the LiDAR is seeing. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of these individual small green points. Those are targets with a little less reflectivity. And then we have the targets with larger reflectivity are, are showing in the, the larger spheres. Mm -hmm. And they, they are all color coded because they run through a, a clustering algorithm. So like all of these points that are in black, we're saying is the same object. So that whole fence is one large object. Okay, yeah. So it'll become more apparent when we make the turn That's and we get cool. a lot more objects. But um, LiDAR is a very similar technology to radar. The chief difference being that radar emits radio waves, whereas LiDAR emits laser pulses. Mm -hmm. So because the laser pulses have a much shorter wavelength, and the sensor has a very high bandwidth, we're able to get re resolution and range down to about four millimeters. So we can tell the difference between two objects that are four millimeters apart. So showing that, right here there's a very clustered, or cluttered I should say, environment, right? We have mm -hmm. many barriers with different depths, and actually two barriers, one behind the other right here. But as you can see, each by the color, the one in front is different from the one in the rear. And these right. are all different as well. So the way we're able to do that is we're getting about 1.2 million points maximum return per second. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to get a very rich three-dimensional view of the world. Mm -hmm. so what do you mean maximum? Well, I mean, if I if I point it in the air, I'm going to get no returns. Oh, okay, shooting off into the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, we're using 140 degrees horizontal field of view, 40 degrees vertically. Mm -hmm. And there's 32 individual lasers inside the LiDAR that scan across, and that's how we get our 40 degree field of view. Gotcha. So, one of the key, one of the advantages of LiDAR is what we're calling angu angular resolution. So that's how many times we fire the laser when we're scanning. Mm -hmm. The more times we fire it, the closer we do that together, the smaller the objects we can see. As we pull up here where we have this sign post, which is probably only maybe three to four centimeters wide, and we're getting multiple reflections off of it and saying it's the same object. The same with the, the farther sign, we're getting returns off the base, off the post, and off the sign, it, the sign itself and saying that it's a different object than the fencing behind it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we see with small objects, and as you can imagine, when we see these larger objects here, we're gonna get a lot more returns off of, off of each of these vehicles. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I removed the image, you could still look at these and say, wow, these are the size and shape of vehicles. It makes it a lot easier for an algorithm that's trying to do classification, mm -hmm. to tell, is it a car, is it a truck, is it a pedestrian, is it a bicyclist? But just with, with the size and the shape, we're able to tell you know, much easier what the object is. Another thing is this classic oh, yeah. where we have a, a, a palette that's probably only about 10 centimeters high, but we're able to get reflections off the side and off the top. Makes it easy to measure the height. But And I know that's a small object, but in an autonomous driving car, that's something that we'd obviously want to try to avoid. Yeah, the difference between that and the plastic bag on the road is a big one. Yes. So I know it's a short demo demonstration, but uh, I think the key takeaway I want you guys to all hear is that AutoLeave is committed to becoming a premier tier one supplier of LiDAR and LiDAR systems. 
and doing so with the safety and reliability that the AutoLeave name has come to represent and also do so at a lower cost because mm -hmm. cost has been the key barrier for this type of technology to enter the much broader consumer vehicle market and not just stuck in the autonomous world. All right, all right, so buckle up and <coughs> see if she identifies you. Oh yeah, do I have to do anything special? No, no, no? just look forward so she can take Welcome a picture of you. Oh, nice. And my chair is in the same position. She just did yeah. she moved for me. Yeah, exactly. So the profile moves between all the cars. And that's also something something that we think is important in the future when you don't actually have your own car, you just have these community cars and you just put your phone, I need a car and it comes and then mm -hmm. you get in and you get all your settings automatically yep. because they move with you with your phone or your facial recognition through some cloud service or something like that. Yep. So now we're gonna go back, but we don't actually need to drive back, so you can just put everything off and just touch the button and we will should start moving. Autonomous drive active. And then we can see if she listens to me. Some music, please. <laughs> she don't like me. <laughs> Some music, please. At least you guys aren't faking it, that's cool. What? At least you guys aren't faking it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like so we don't need to listen to him again. <laughs> so, message. so what do you think so far? Really cool. Um, it's it's really quite um, cohesive. Mm -hmm. It's come together really well. Yeah, yeah. I think it's become a nice nice platform to see how people behave and so on. And one thing we didn't show you now, but you're going to see later on, is we also try to see facial expressions of people through the camera up there. Right. Okay. And then how they react to different bits of information when you pull their belt do they become happy or nervous or whatever yeah because if someone becomes nervous they, nervous they might be a worse driver you yeah. don't want that so you want them to react in the right way and then yeah. when you give them information in the correct way yeah so that's why we need to log everything that's going on see how people react and, so on, and then have a system that learns that over time because yeah. people react differently to different things yes yeah. will the interface have to be very cool exactly like that nice. or have it will be designed by each individual manufacturer? No, this is just a sample we have for research purposes, but I mean, every OEM can decide however they want it. So we're trying to research more about the, the things that are behind this, and the attractions and then the, the interfaces, more pointing a light at someone or if you want something on the screen or not. But Has any of this been sourced for production yet? Well, all the sensors are yep. production ready. Yep. But the on top layer that is lead is just a research platform. Sure. Okay. Cool. Working. Okay, sir. Come back here. Come back here, please.